Then, <clears throat> let me see. Then I will come to our next speaker. So it's uh, Professor Olivier Gena. He is head of Organs on Chip Technology at ArtOrg Center for Biomedical Engineering Research at the University of Bern. He's mainly involved in lung on chip development. He's also the founder of Alveolix, a biotech startup that is bringing this lung on chip to the market. He did a postdoc at Harvard Medical School and at the Ecole Polytechnique de Montreal. He also worked at the CSEM, the Swiss Center for Electronics and Microelectronics. And I'm really happy that he's here, and I'm curious what he will present. Thank you very much, Martin. Is, there, is it working? OK. Can you hear me? OK, otherwise I'm going to take Oh, now you can hear me. Well, thank you very much, Marcus, for the kind introduction. It's my pleasure to be here this afternoon. As Marcus said, I will t show you uh, two examples of uh, lung, uh, lung models, lung in vitro models. The first one is about a lung on a chip, and the second one is a lung microvascular on a chip. Maybe one can say at the beginning, we work very closely with a lung uh, clinician from the uh, University Hospital of Bern. So straight away, actually, uh, let's go in the complexity of the air blood barrier, this fantastic uh, organ. If you go deep down, actually, in your organ, actually, what you can see the deep down here, we can see the lung alveoli. This is a structure, structure that looks like this here. That's about half a millimeter. And if you zoom here, that's the alveolar barrier. You, have, you see this here. And it's an extremely th a thin barrier. We talk about less than one micron. And on top of that barrier, you have epithelial cells and endothelial cells, also a whole bunch of immune cells. And of course, the whole thing here is, every time we breathe, is in dynamic movement. And uh, basically, we talk about the physiological stress between 5 and 12 percent, 12 percent being actually when you take a deep inspiration. So what we started actually is to create first a very thin barrier, so with a polymeric membrane, which is about 3 micron in thickness, not quite that thin like in vivo, but for us it was very important also to have a robust device. And on that membrane we can culture cells, here depict, depicted epithelial cells, these two types we have in the lung, and endothelial cells at the bottom here. And since the whole thing is dynamic, we thought, how can we mimic these 3D movements of the cyclic stress, of the breathing motions? And in vivo, actually, we have this muscle, the main muscle for inspiration, which is the diaphragm. And every time the diaphragm contracts, basically, the whole lung expands. And we did exactly the same thing here. We were bio-inspired, if you like, and we created this, what we call the micro-diaphragm. And this micro-diaphragm, you can see here, is connected we don't see it, but there is a small microchannel here, and it's connected to an external electropneumatic device. So we have this thin barrier, which is here, that would be this here, which is deflected in 3D like in vivo. So the chip looks like this. We have three what we call alveoli. So each of those well, or each of those wells here is equipped with such a membrane. Here we see a membrane that is uh, yeah, about three micron in thickness with pores, and here we see pores of uh, 8 microns. We have also membranes, and that's the one actually we use most, with pores of 3.5 uh, microns. And uh, that cells, so, so that's epi lung epithelial cells, when they are cultured on the membrane, if you look well, behind actually you can see these pores that we can see here. And here we can see very nicely actually the tight junction of these lung uh, epithelial cells. And if we have a look actually from the top of this membrane, you can see here on this video, I hope you can see well, you can see how these cells do deflect or are actually uh, mechanically stretched about 10% linear strain. Now actually, I jump directly to a clinical relevance of this mechanical stress, and that we know that from our clinicians. One of our clinicians is a specialist of lung fibrosis, idiopathic lung fibrosis, meaning the, the cause of this disease is not well known. So what, what they observe actually in clinics between a healthy lung, that's a CT scan of a healthy lung, and that's a CT scan of a fibrotic lung. So basically what you can see here, the fibrotic lesions here of, of the lung. And uh, I didn't say that actually, but uh, fib lung fibrosis is really a scarring of the lung. It's like when you have uh, a wound actually on your skin, and the, skin, uh, the wound doesn't close very well, actually you have 
a scar actually that is forming, meaning actually that the membrane I showed you earlier, this extremely thin membrane, becomes thicker and thicker, and patient cannot breathe anymore because oxygen cannot diffuse to that barrier. And what is interesting, actually, uh, that was a group of Selman who showed actually that the mechanical stress is the highest at the periphery of the lung, exactly where we can see and where we observe actually in patients these fibrotic lesions. So that's actually a non ongoing work. We try actually to see the correlation between this mechanical stress from the breathing mo movement. So I'm talking here about the physiological stress, not about the pathophysiological stress, and the progression of this disease. So early uh, result I can show you is we created uh, that's an epithelial layer uh, on this uh, thin and porous membrane, and uh, we made a scratch on that membrane, typically like to reproduce what, we, what is believed to be at the onset of IPF, or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, micro-injury of the epithelium. And uh, what we observed, we did a wound healing assay with a drug called HGF, hepatic growth factor, that is known to promote uh, wound healing. And what we observed that in static mode, without breathing movement, the wound healing is faster than in a dynamic mode. So basically, we can say that, uh, uh, I mean, at least that's what I say actually to pharma companies, when they test the drugs uh, for IPF, they test it actually in static solution, and maybe they should think to, to test that in a dynamic solution to be more uh, clinically relevant. I'm jumping now actually to a second model, this lung microvasculature. What you can see here is a cast of these microcapillaries from the alveolar uh, regions. So these microvasculature, they are made of uh, endothelial cells, obviously, and pericytes that do really line uh, these microvasculature, and they are very, very important. At the chip, we, we developed with uh, two. That's not really a well, because everything is microchannels. That's about uh, four centimeters by three centimeters here. And this is how it looks like. So uh, if you look, have a close look actually of the chip, you have a central chamber and two uh, chamber on the side here, and we have here reservoir for the cell culture medium. In the central chamber, we add some fibrin for the microenvironment and cells, endothelial cells and pericytes. And you will see it in a second uh, here, that's a video of the central chamber here, these uh, endothelial cells and pericytes do really form a microvasculature by themselves. It's really fascinating how they self-assemble. Just one quick word here. So we have this uh, reservoir with the cell culture mediums that allow actually these two reservoirs to connect. So that's the first video taken during 72 hours, one picture per, per, um, per hour. And you see how these endothelial cells and pericytes actually do uh, align and create these we don't see here now, but we see actually some lumen. I'll just throw that in a second. And you can see in red here that the pericytes that do migrate from the side uh, chambers here. And the next video I can show you that uh, we, don't own, we have lumen, but in addition we have perfusible lumen. So we can really start to perfuse some drugs in there, to perfuse some liquids, also to create the shear stress that is needed for these uh, vessels to stabilize. And on the next uh, slide, what I'd like to show you, these are now actually microvasculature with pericyte, and we can clearly see that this microvasculature is quite tight and uh, stable. Also on the permeability, I don't have the time to show you all the, the uh, results here. And if you look well on this confocal picture right now, you'll see actually the opening, so basically that's a cross-section of one of these microchannels. And, uh, uh, what I like most is really that, uh, that uh, result here. So we have now microvasculature that is perfusible, that is also tight, meaning actually that uh, we can uh, regulate with this pericyte the permeability of this microvasculature, and in addition, they can vasoconstrict. So here what we have, we tested actually phenylephrine, which is a vasoconstrictor that you use for patients in uh, surgery when they have a uh, hypotension to uh, make these uh, vessels smaller. And as you can see here, that's a ratio of one of these channels here, and that's uh, the control. And when you add phenylephrine, you can clearly see a reduction of the size of this microvessel. So in a nutshell, what I'd like to say is uh, we're moving actually towards more predictive uh, in vitro models with this organ on chip. We're able actually to mimic some specific in vivo features, like for the lung on chip, we are able to mimic or to recreate a very thin barrier, ultra-thin barrier, 
also the mechanical movement, the 3D movements, and for the lung microvasculature, the perfusion and the vasoconstriction. With that, actually, as I showed, actually, you can test some, some drugs, either for the wound healing and many more assays, which I didn't show you here, and also for vasoconstriction. And in addition, what is very important for us, I didn't really mention that, but that's uh, related actually to the lung on chip. Like Marcus mentioned earlier, we want to put that on and bring that on the market. It's a system that is robust, that, is, that you can use already today actually with a multi pipette, uh, with the idea actually to have an array and uh, make uh, several tests in parallel. Finally, I'd like to thank my team. They did a, a great uh, work, Colette Bixel for the lung microvasculature model, and uh, Andreas Stucki and Yannick Stucki, as well as Marcel Felder and Yves Mermou for the lung on chip, for the long work and uh, also the clinical partner from the pulmonary medicine division and thoracic surgery. Finally, the people actually believed in us and gave us some money. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, we keep our question.